Hello everyone, this is Reza Wazi and I welcome you to the Predictive Decision Trees Analysis with Rapid Miner tutorial. This tutorial is loosely based on Dr. Matthew Norse's Data Mining for Masses book. I have already imported the data file needed for this analysis into Rapid Miner. Let's go ahead and take a look at the training data and meanwhile get to understand the business goal and the data a little bit better. I'm going to drag and drop the training data set into the Rapid Miner and I'm going to rename it to DT Training. I will connect it to the results port and we'll go ahead and run it. Let's go to the statistics tab. As you can see here, I already assigned the role of ID to user ID. This is my ID in this database set. And I already assigned the role of label to e-reader adoption. But what is the goal of this analysis? And uh, what do we want to do? Here, we want to predict the timing of customer buying behavior through analyzing past customer behavior data. This data is coming from an online retailer who's, who specializes in electronics. Uh, this online retailer had already launched and sold one version of their electronic readers or e-readers. They want to use their past data, the data of customers who actually bought their first version of e-reader in order to predict the behavior of their current customers and the buying behavior of their current customers when it comes to their uh, version 2 or second version of your uh, their e-reader the upcoming version of their e-reader they want to see if the customers are going to be innovators early adopters early majority or late majority this prediction helps them in two ways first it helps them to be more efficient in meeting the demands of their customers and in optimizing their distribution efforts second it helps them to identify how likely each customer is going to behave so they can come up with individualized and customized marketing material for each customer so they can potentially increase their revenue based on a well-established theory by everett rogers adoption of a new technology or innovation follows a specific trend with a smaller group of most enterprising and innovative customers adopting the technology first, followed by larger groups of middle majority adopters, followed by smaller groups of late majority. As you can see here, the number of adopters at each time at each time frame follows that uh, bell-shaped curve and the cumulative number of uh, adopters over time or the overall number of adopters, the total number of adopters follows that S-shaped curve. So as I said, the training data set comes from the old customers, those who actually bought our first version of e-readers. And since this is an online retailer, it tends to collect a lot of information about its customers. So out of that abundance of information that it collects uh, from its customers, business analysts believe that the ones that are included in this data set are more important or affect the target variable or what we want to predict more. And what do we want to predict? We want to predict the timing with, in which customers are going to adopt our new e-reader. So here are the variables. Let's take a look at them. We have gender, which is M for male and F for female. We have age, which, which is person's age at the time the data were extracted. We have marital status, M for married, S for not married. We have website activity, which is seldom, regular, or frequent. We have bronze electronics in the past 12 months, which is a binary yes or no bought electronics in the past 12 months again it's a binary yes or no bought digital media in the last 18 months binary yes or no bought digital book that's like ever that's yes or no and then 
we have reason to believe that payment method somehow is related to uh, the time frame our customers are going to adopt uh, this e-reader and we have bank transfer website uh, account credit card or monthly billing now let's take a closer look at our uh, e-reader adoption our target variable we have four major categories in our e-reader adoption uh, and remember that the e-reader adoption is our target variable and the target variable only exists in the past data or in the training data and here we have innovators innovators are those who purchase the product uh, within one week of its release those who purchase after the first week but within the second or third week are entered as early adopters those who purchase after three weeks but within the first two months are early at the majority and those who purchase after the first two months are late majority going back to data you can see that we don't have any missing values and as you've learned either missing values or outliers are not going to cause any problem for decision trees analysis but you still have to check for any possible inconsistencies since the data is already clean there is no inconsistency right now in this data set but in actual analysis you have to check for any type of data inconsistencies okay now let's go ahead and run decision trees analysis and see how it will turn out to be so the operator for decision tree is called decision tree let's go ahead and drag and drop it if I select it you can see some parameters we'll s I'll play with parameters later but now let's keep them at default let's keep the apply pruning there and apply pre pruning there and let's go ahead and drag and drop a scoring I'm going to rename it to DT scoring apply model and let's get both the lab and the model let's run decision trees with its uh, default parameters so here is the tree you can see that it starts with the website activity from the lecture you've learned that it always starts with the best predictor and then goes to the next one here the best predictor for how soon customers are going to buy the e-reader is the website activity and then it's age when the apps website activity is regular if I zoom out you can see that the tree is pretty big it's pretty wide and pretty big you've learned that this kind of tree can run into the problem of overfitting also when you have big trees like this it's going to be more difficult to extract meaningful and generalized business rules out of it right now you can go okay if the website activity is regular and age is between 65 and 6 and let's say that age is uh, greater than 65 then they are going to be early majority if the website activity is regular and age is less than 60, 65 but greater than 63 then it's going to the, the, then the next attribute is going to be whether they bought digital books in the past or not so it's a lot of details so a lot of small rules so how can we make this tree smaller remember from lecture to make to control the growth of the tree you can apply pre pruning let's go to the design and uh, take a look at the parameters we are applying the pre pruning here means that we are playing with the minimal gain and minimal leaf size so what do you think will happen if I increase the minimal gain go back to the lecture if I increase the minimal gain I'm increasing the threshold which the decision tree algorithm needs to create the split when you increase the threshold you are decreasing the size of the tree you are decreasing the number of branches and the size of the tree 
let's go ahead and increase this to 1.2 and run the model one more time it got smaller but not much let's go back and apply another pre-printing let's change the minimal leaf size from 2 to 4 now I'm forcing the algorithm to at least have four members in each leaf. Let's go ahead and run the model and see what happened. This one is a lot smaller, a little bit easier to explain and understand. Again, you can see that website activity is still the most important predictor of your uh, customer behavior. We have regular, frequent, and seldom. So you can construct a rule like this for customers who are not very active or uh, on our website or they are active uh, their activity is categorized as seldom uh, you can go ahead and look at the, whether they bought digital books in the past or not if they bought digital book in the past you can categorize them as early adopter if they've not bought digital book in the past then you are going to look at the age if the age is less than 25, then they can be categorized as early majority. If the age is more than 25, then they are going to be categorized as late majority. And if you look at these lifts, you can see that it's colorful. The colorful of the lift uh, tells you that there are different members of categories existing on that lift. So, for example, on this early adopter lift, we have four colors. It means that we have members of four different categories classified under this leaf and named early adopter. Let's go ahead and hover above it. So you can see the leaf has 200 members. 14 of them are late majority. 12 of them are innovator. 101 are early adopters. And 72 are early majority. Since there are more early adopters in this leaf it is named as early adopter so it's a general rule that it tells you okay look at the uh, website activity of the customer if the website activity is seldom then look at the digital book and then uh, then look at whether they bought digital book at all or not if they bought digital book there is more chance for them to turn out to be early adopters you see it's all about chances again and you can see that when the website act activity is regular, then we have two levels of age, then whether they bought the digital book or not, again, depending on yes or no. If it is no, then we have another age bracket. If it is yes, we have browse electronic books in the next, uh, in the past 12 months. So you can see, you can construct a rule from top to bottom of this tree. So this tree is a lot smaller and easier to comprehend, easier to understand. You can even attempt to make it a little bit uh, more compact by increasing the minimal gain a little bit. Let's go ahead and increase it to uh, 0.13. This one is even smaller than that. Let's go ahead and increase it to 0.14 run it okay this tree is very small and compact so uh, you can come up with less rules more general rules so as you go to more general rules you are losing some predictive power generally you are generalizing a lot more so there is a delicate balance that uh, which tree is better generally the more detailed trees as long as they do not fall into the overfitting trap they should do better at prediction but those detailed and big trees are not really good for business meetings in which you want to come up with few interesting rule of, few interesting rule of thumbs and tell your manager hey look at this you know if you want to quickly categorize or classify your customers you can look at their website activity it's seldom regular frequent and then you can then you can look at their age if it is not seldom you see you can come up with pretty interesting rules and you can extract those rules, those general rules from smaller trees. 
it's easier to comprehend it's easier to understand but as you get to smaller trees you are generalizing more and more so you might be losing some predictive power so which one is really better you cannot really answer by looking at the tree uh, you can answer this once you learn how to validate your model how to run cross validation and evaluate your model and get the accuracy precision and recall readings and based on those readings decide which tree performs be actually performs better when it comes to predicting you can use that tree for your prediction to generate results and use a smaller tree for your presentation to come up with general rules uh, you can also go ahead and take a look at the results here. Here are the results. Here's the prediction and then you have the confidence, your probability for each category. We can go ahead and for example sort based on the innovators. These are what these are the customers that the algorithm classified as innovators. You can go ahead and see as long as innovator has the highest probability among the all four of these uh, categories, the algorithm classified the customer as an innovator. When we scroll down here, we are still getting probabilities higher for innovator, but here you have a higher probability for the early adopter. That's why it's changed to early adopter. So again, when it comes to predict to interpreting the results of any predictive analysis, you always use the results as an extra piece of information to make a better and more informed decision. I repeat it again, you should never ever only base your uh, decision on the output of any sorts of predictive analytics. If you do that, you are bound to get fired, you are bound to lose your job. So predictive analytics only provides another means, another piece of information for you to make a better and more informed decision. You should always rely on your domain knowledge as well as the output you get from any source of predictive analysis from RapidMiner or any other predictive analytics software. Okay, this concludes the tutorial for decision trees.